Hello and welcome to episode two of Observing the Earth. My name is Jesse Rouse and again this week we'll be talking about Earth observation and remote sensing. This week we're getting a little bit more technical, asking the question of how is imagery captured? Now there's different ways, but really to understand the different ways we have to understand first what geospatial data is. And we'll start out by talking about something that's not really involved too much in Earth observation itself, but one of the uh, derivative products or other products, and that is vector data. Vector data is made up of points, lines, and polygons. Now you remember these from geometry class, or you will learn about them in geometry class depending on how old you are. But basically they allow us to capture information that's discrete, only exists in certain areas. Whereas raster data is what's referred to as continuous. Everywhere that you have a scene of data, you will have information. So just like whenever you're taking a picture with your camera, everything that you can see to that viewfinder there's some piece of information there. Now what you're seeing is uh, an array of cells. These cells exist in your camera, in a satellite camera or on an airplane's camera. And this array of cells is just little squares along. And whenever you open up the shutter on your camera, it allows in energy, light. And that light then is captured by these cells. And so whenever you zoom in really tight onto a remote sensing image, you'll actually be able to see that you have little squares of data that make up this uh, information. High resolution data, you have things like six inch by six inch data, one meter by one meter data, moderate resolution data, oftentimes at 20 or 30 meter by um, the same on each side. So you get these nice squares. Now, as I was saying, the energy that is captured by your array of cells in your camera is coming from somewhere. Generally, we're talking about passive remote sensing, which is relying on energy coming from the sun. So we have energy that's coming down from the sun. Some of the wavelengths are being absorbed by the material, but those that aren't absorbed are actually reflected off the material and find their way up to the sensor, your array of cells. There's also active remote sensing where you actively use some sort of light source. Uh, things like LiDAR, as I mentioned in the first episode, is a good example of uh, active remote sensing, but most of the time we're dealing with uh, passive remote sensing in our episodes in the future. Now for the cameras, Generally, uh, aerial photos taken from planes, helicopters, uh, balloons, kites, are captured just like any other camera-based uh, image. It's an array of cells. You're gonna have a certain number uh, wide, a certain number of high. And so what you get is a traditional image. So you can see here an example of one image that's taken uh, along a line of photos. Here you can see the next image that was taken along that same flight path. But whenever we look at satellites, for many satellites, uh, it's actually a single or only a couple of lines of sensors. And what happens is as the satellite rotates around the Earth, it captures. So it continuously is capturing information. And this is what we refer to as push broom. As you can see in this image, uh, as the satellite moves forward, it's capturing new cells of information that are being added onto that image. So instead of having a simple one snapshot like we would with a traditional camera, we actually have a series of cells that are stitched back together to create an image. Both of these work very well and again it's based on different situations and you have some push broom uh, scanners that are uh, used in the atmosphere. You have some traditional camera techniques that are used uh, and on satellites. So it's a combination of things. But this generally gives you an idea of how we're getting data in. We have energy that's coming from the sun. Some of those wavelengths from the sun are being absorbed, which we'll talk about in future episodes, but those that are reflected come up to our sensor into our array of cells. That array of cells then is our raster that is continuous across the entire surface. Uh, and so you have this wonderful image that we can do lots of things with, everything from view it simply to doing scientific analysis on some of these images. Now in future episodes we'll talk about wavelengths uh, and how different cameras capture different wavelengths of energy. Of course we see the world in red, green, and blue, but there's a lot of other uh, energy that's coming from the sun that can be captured. Mm -hmm.